refresh your screen. Your screen good? Yeah. Yeah. I see it now. There we go. There yeah. we go, man. <laughs> yeah. It, it took a minute, man. It really it's took a minute. Um. So, hey, everybody. This is Team Mr. Legacy Builder. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I am here with the one and only, the infamous brother from another, Stephen Moore, you know, founder of More Witness Tees, LLC. Hey, man, what's going on? What's up, man? Thank you, T, Mr. Legacy Builder. Glad that uh, we got a chance to do this, man. I appreciate it. I'm humbled, and I am blessed, man. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. No problem, man. No problem. So I'm going to just cut right into it because time is always valuable, man. And I want to um, – I'm getting a lot of things. Let me just tell everybody the link real fast. Okay. There we go. So we're going to um, get right into it, man. So real fast, just – you know, just I personally know who you are and everything, but for the world, just tell us a little about yourself, man. Who is Stephen Moore and, you know, how did you come with the idea of your company? Like, we let, how we get here? Take us back. All so right. walk us through. Right. Well, who was Stephen before the company? Okay. Well, I'm Stephen Moore. Um, as you know, a lot, a lot of other people don't know, uh, born in Jersey City, you know, a uh, little bit of rough, rough upbringing, you know what I mean? And I did a lot of bouncing back and forth from New Jersey to Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota is where, as an adult, I started to learn some things about myself. Uh, one of those things was uh, social stigmas. And the, the big one was um, around mental illness and addiction. Mm. Um, battling with those two things led me into treatment and led me to meet some amazing people and leaving out of there with this awakening feeling um, and, and, and this, this bright epiphany of how could I be of service to people and how could we change the culture and how could we change the stigma that, that people look at those who've been through down, that been down that road. So yeah. um, something as simple as fashion statements, you know what I mean? It's kind of what, what peaked it. So uh, we started, me and a couple of my friends, man, we talked about it. And I started something called More Awareness Tees, um, bringing aware, awareness to different social si stigmas and situations, um, sobriety being my main vocal point. But um, there's a lot of different things that go on in our culture, man, that I, that I feel like... Uh, we need to be aware of. So what better way to do it than fashion? So um, I got together with some people and some good friends, you know, and started to piece by piece get things together. And here we are with more awareness tees. Yeah, man, that's, yeah, a lot of people, man, they don't realize the importance of things that happen every day from, you know, different types of awarenesses from, you know, what you've been through and just different everyday things. I know a lot of times people just put out um, racism and things of that nature, but your movement really helps people understand what's going on and how they can go to it. So were you always in the, like, what was your first product? Um, was a sober shirt. Actually, it was a sober shirt. I, my first design was a so burr because we're in Minnesota and it's cold. So it was a so burr design with the Minnesota logo. And um, also being in Minnesota, I went to church right kitty corner where George Floyd was murdered. And mm. it was huge because that church and that, that area where I've been plenty of times um, rang very, very close to me. So then from the sober, I kind of put that on the, the, the side for a second and start doing Black Lives Matter t-shirts, you know, and that really took off. That really um, gave me a lot more traction, you know. Um, yeah. but my, my main thing when I started was the sober, 
But, you know, then I, I started to realize that, you know what, mental and addiction illnesses weren't the only ones that we were facing and weren't the only things that needed some shine, you yeah. know? So that's where the Black Lives Matter came in. But for my first design was the Minnesota Sober design. Nice, nice. Now, um, are your shirts for just, are they for like, who are they for? Like when, with your shirts, are they for children, adults, men, women, like what type of shirt? Oh do you man. Have? Um, they're for everybody, just like um, me going to treatment, right? You know, mm -hmm. um, as I talk about racial indiscrepancies, um, mental illness and addiction doesn't discriminate. That is something that affects everyone, you know, all, you know, all ages, all different walks of life. And um, going through that, I also got a chance to meet with people that I probably normally wouldn't have crossed paths with. Um, but we all have something in common and that kind of allowed me to, to, to think about which direction I wanted to go. And I wanted to do something for everybody. So this is something for everybody. You know, we, we did, uh, young kids. I did birthday party. We also do custom stuff too. So I did custom work and I, I, I did it all for everybody. This is something that I wanted to be inclusive. I wanted everybody to feel a part of. Yeah. Um, I wanted to reach the community, you know, and that bringing it back, that's what, what more awareness tease was about, it's about bringing more awareness. I hear that. So it's more awareness with two as two, um, at the end, is it two E's, correct? Yes. Two yeah. E's, S, more awareness tease. Spelled the way it sounds. That's what's up. Yeah. So I'm about, in a second, I'm going to show the site. So that way everybody can be able to see the great more awareness teams, man. So how did you get out to the community, man? How did how did it feel telling your story like that? What made you so comfortable sharing your story with everybody? Um, I'm not even gonna lie to you. At first it was very difficult. Um, you know, I was worried about the judgment. I was worried about the the little slanted eyes and the whispers that you, you might hear. Uh, because I feel I felt like um, people have an opinion or people have a pre people have a judgment of when you say, hey, I'm an alcoholic or hey, I'm an addict. You know, I feel like people already start to dismiss you or look at you sideways. But um, there was an incident when my uncle passed away. And I gave I gave a, a speech at his funeral and. I'm so used to the AA meetings to, to announce myself, hey, I'm Steven, I'm an addict, alcoholic. I get up to the podium and I'm like, hey, I'm Steven, I'm an addict, alcoholic, and the whole room embraced it, you know? And so it let me know that it was okay, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that was a, a shining moment for me, um, realizing that I can talk about this and I can be open with this to everybody. And I'm an open book. If you have questions, if you have anything, reach out to me. I'll talk to you about it. I, you know what I mean? My journey, my story, you know, is what makes me who I am. I'm not defined by my past. I'm, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm moving towards something greater. Yeah, man, because when I heard your story with, um, pull up the screen so they can see it. Um, when I heard your story and when me and you first was chopping it up and you was telling me about, um, your, your brand and everything, I was like, okay, you know, the word play with more awareness and, you know, the name more and how powerful our name is. Yeah. I was impressed because what a lot of people don't understand is it takes a, a lot to be willing to give yourself to the world and have a movement like yours where you're out there educating people through your brand, letting them know it's okay to share with people that, you know, cause to me, it's a unity thing. It's okay to let people know that, hey, what I've been through is not me. It doesn't define me. It yeah. doesn't mean that I'm a bad person. And sometimes in life, actually what I've been through is meant to make me a little stronger and allow me to get out there and really touch base with people and help people know, you know, that this can be overcame. There's people out there that um, 
have been through, not just what you've been through, but also some people out there who have experienced what you've been through and have managed to be as successful as you are, you know, and that's a testament to everybody that bringing awareness to it is actually the first step in taking it to the next level. Um, yeah, man, so I'm proud of you, man. So what's Thank been you. your main, I'm looking at your page over here and, you know, I, I love the sweaters, man. The sweaters look nice. Um, <laughs> What's your top seller on your page? Like, um, I would have to say it'd be it'd be the the So Burr shirt. That was probably uh one of my main sellers right down there, right there. Yeah, the the Sober hoodies, the Sober T shirts. Um, I I had to say I sold quite a few of those. Uh, we yeah. Minnesota has a huge recovery community. Um, people come from all over the country to come to Minnesota to recover from drugs, alcohol, whatever the case may be. And I didn't know this. I've been in Minnesota for years and didn't realize that the opportunity was here. You know, um, and I think when it comes to that particular situation, we don't know. That's yeah. why I thought more awareness tease was very necessary because sometimes we're just not aware. Until so you might see somebody wearing a sober shirt, and you say, "Oh man," I, and you like, "Yeah, man, I got this." So, and it's a conversation starter, you know, yeah. it's a conversation starter. And then that, in that conversation, you are aware of things. Now you now you having the conversation. That's how everything starts. That's correct. That's correct. So, with um, with your tees and everything, do they come in like different colors? Um, what's like the main color? Um, we do pretty basic right now. Uh, main color, you know, black, white, gray. Um, I've done a lot of black shirts. I think people like the black, and maybe it's because it's cold here. And when you got a black shirt, it's gonna help keep you a little bit warmer. But uh, mainly, it's been a lot of black shirts, and also equality shirts. The equality shirts um, have been a huge seller as well. We got a huge support group in our uh, our pride communities, man, and I I'm supporting them. Now, now, remember you telling me earlier. Um, so, what um, organizations you guys got a, a give back program that you was telling me that you're oh yeah you guys, um, are part of? You want to talk about that and let everybody know how that works? Okay, so yeah, that that is huge, and I think that was the main thing you know that got me doing this. It wasn't because I was trying to become some entrepreneur, just get rich quick thing and sell shirts. I wanted to give back and uh, I wanted to do, I wanted to be of service to the community. So every quarter we take a portion of our, our profits and we donate it to a nonprofit organization that's out there on the front lines, putting that work in. So this quarter we got Beyond Your Block, shots out to Beyond Your Block. Um, their nonprofit organization will be our first donation uh, coming up this quarter. And they are specifically for young black men, high school age, getting them tech tutors and technology uh, uh, based information, education. Nice. So every quarter you give out to them or every quarter you give out to different um, people? How does it work? Moving forward, we, every quarter we will pick a different organization or a different group and we will be sending out emails and we'd love comments and feedback and if you know of an organization or if it's your hood or your community that may need something please send us a message reach out we'd love to connect with you um we did a, a partial donation this wasn't for our quarterly but this was something that rang with my heart and uh because i love my nephew that's one of the the clothing brands that i have it's called okay. Nep. Um, so I donated some shirts to uh, Thomas Edison High School uh, for Northeast Minneapolis, their football team, their varsity football nice. team. I donated some Black Lives Matter shirts to those young men. Uh, they're doing great work on the field and off the field, and I'm so proud of those guys. Man, that you are... you. I mean, knowing you as your family, you know, I've, I've always knew you had to give you know, you always yeah. added value to people and things, but you know that that's that says a lot for you to be willing to not just put yourself out there, but 
add value to people and, you know, let them know that you're not just supporting them, but your movement is bigger than just, like you said, making money off of it. You know, that's yeah. what's up. Um, tell me a little about how the, how the clothing thing started, man. Did you have help? Did you have, you know, were people just handing you money? Like, <laughs> let me know, man. Tell me about it. No, that's a, that's a good question, T. Um, it's, it it, it, it kind of goes back to me um, getting sober. Um, they had when I went to treatment, they had a crafting room, right? So <laughs> we played around in the crafting room and we were painting and getting into art. And man, that became like a form of meditation for me. Like I got to painting, and I really kind of started tapping into this really creative side that I forgot about as a kid, you know. Um, and that's a lot, and that's another thing about learning about yourself. You know, I, I tapped into that and I started to make little custom t-shirts and stuff when I was in there. And as I came out, um, I said, oh man, I, this was kind of cool. At first I was doing it for me. And then I said, man, you know what? A couple of the guys in some of my uh, groups like the shirts and wanted one. And I said, man, this might be something that uh, I can actually do. And, nice. you know, with the whole COVID-19 situation, we weren't actually able to be active like we usually were. So a lot of things were virtual as it is now. But um, it was cool to see somebody wearing a shirt or me sending somebody a shirt just to let them know I'm thinking about them. And so I'm so in that. Yeah. So your, um, your, your brand, your company is based on online, like for the most part? What are you that? based on? Are you based online for the most part, or are you gonna? Yeah. Okay. It's been it's been uh, strictly online. Um, I think in the early early parts of it was uh, before I had the the online website up. It was just like DMs, like somebody would send me a message, "Hey, could I get a couple of those shirts?" You know, and then so I would do it. But um, and then I was thinking to myself, like, man, I got to get organized with this, and uh, yeah. that's where like you know. What you do is so important. You know, you bring that knowledge to people to help build these businesses for people who don't know much about it. I get on yeah. the phone with you, and I learn so much more in that conversation. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, man. So well, it's important to subscribe to channels like this when somebody's giving you that information. You know, take those gems when you could. Yeah, man, because I went up... I mean, I've been in business for about seven years dealing with the real estate and the consulting space, but my goal has always been to try to solve problems with people, even when it was back in the day as kids when we used to try to figure out how to get some candy, <laughs> and we were between 11, 12, and 13, so trust me, I definitely- How we gonna get some more cookies in that jar? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's what's up. Um, so is your company available? Are you servicing globally? Are you national or are you still smoking? Um, I feel we will be growing. The, the more we continue and the more support we get from the people, we will be growing and we will be getting to more accessories and stuff like that. But yeah. um, as of now, we got masks, we got hoodies, we got jackets, hats, and shirts. Nice. Nice. I, mean, I plan on uh, uh, growing this thing as far as you know, as, as far as we could, with uh, with the help and the support of the communities. Nice. What is your um, as an entrepreneur? What is your like when you reached? How did you know your? I guess with the people because the channel itself is based on business, real estate, and multiple money, um, multiple money streams. So how did you know that? you know, clothing was going to be the thing that was going to really work for you? Like, what made you feel that that was really going to be it? Um, After the first couple, my first few weeks of selling my sober shirts, my Black Lives Matter shirts, um, I remember talking to my wife about it. I came home, and I mean, this was before the website, so it was either Cash App or Cash. And I remember looking and telling my wife, man, I made some money, you know, I said, man, I can probably actually be pretty lucrative at this, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, you know, a lot of my AA groups were all self-sustaining. So um, I made a charitable donation to one of my AA groups. 
and that kind of clicked in my head and I said, you know, I can really be of service financially to different groups by selling these shirts. So it, it, things just kind of started to line up, you know what I mean, the way that they were supposed to. And as I continued to go and I had a huge support from, I, I, I got to thank everybody in my corner, man. Uh, Minneapolis, Brooklyn Park, the Twin Cities, um, a lot of friends and family, my mom. Uh, it was a lot of people, man, uh, who reached out and bought shirts when I first started this thing up. And I couldn't have did it without them. Yeah. Man, that's, you know, I always say um, when you're telling your story, you never let nobody um, carry your pen and write your story by controlling that pen. But you tend to know who's really with you, especially with a movement like yours. You tend yeah. to know who's with you by the vein that connects to the pocketbook. Like, um, I always, <laughs> yeah. like uh, one of my mentors used to always tell me, you know, the most important way of showing support and value, um, even if you don't want or you don't directly have the money at that point, is referring somebody to you or even just reaching out and just answering questions and things like that. So yeah. I commend you, man, for stepping out there and you married, correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. man. How long you been married? Almost 10 years. Woo! Uh, believe it or not. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, my, my nine year anniversary is coming up. Uh, the end of 2021 will be 10 years. So congratulations, we're man. So how are you able to, like, what is some, some ways that you're able to manage, you know, the, the business, you got the fam, you got kids, right? I got kids. Yeah, I got, man. Uh, four kids. One of them is grown and out the house. I got three of them here. Um, but And I got a full-time job. I'm an operating engineer for a wastewater treatment plant. I do environmental service work. Uh so yeah, it is pretty difficult. We work 12 hour shifts. We're essential, you know, so it's been, it's a 24 seven operation. We don't stop at the wastewater treatment plant. Um, but this is something that I'm passionate about. And I think when you're passionate about something, you make time, right? Yeah. So, man. Um, I, there was plenty of times where right after a 12 hour shift of working, I came home and had to press up some shirts. It's like, okay, I got three, four orders I got to make. And so, you know, you so make it happen. And uh, my family has been super supportive. They love what I'm doing. They see what I'm doing. I think it's a, it, it's exciting in the house as well. Um, it's been really good energy behind it because the cost of it. I think it would yeah. be a different tone if it was just, oh, dad's just trying to get some money. I think it would be a different tone. But my kids are very much a part of my recovery, and they see the help, and they see the, the necessity of it. So I think... Um, everybody's on board and they see what kind of good we could be doing. Well, man, you are, do you have any actual targeted, um, like awareness, um, awarenesses that you target or is your story mainly just bringing awareness to letting everybody know that it's okay to go through something and be able to come through it on top? Is, is that more so what you guys are about, or is it just about bringing awareness to struggles that everybody is going through? I think, um, you know, I think the underlying thing is my story is me overcoming uh, addiction and beating it. And then it became, well, people can change because I'm starting to feel like, you know, I was in a really bad spot. I'm like, well, if I could pull myself out of there, you know, anybody could. And then yeah. I'm looking at, as the fall kind of clears up, I'm looking at the current climate of the world. And there's so many different things like, you know, I mean, we could sit and talk about uh, it's to the, the year 2020. And we're still talking first black this, first black that. We should be so far from that. And that was a whole nother conversation. We're talking about equality and about Black Lives Matter, that movement and about ending racism, which... Uh, we are so, for, we should be so far from that as people. You know what I mean? Just being human beings. And like I said, back to more awareness tees, the, the sobriety and recovery is what brought all of that to light to me because sobriety has no discrimination. 
you know. So that brought the whole piece of the world to to my eyes, and it was yeah. like, how can I bring that look to uh, on a greater scale? You know. Yeah, man. Um, like I said, from knowing you personally, I already yeah. knew you was the man at a young age that we used to say, hungry, hungry, Steven. Yeah. I was like, you know, he gotta be successful because he eat like a millionaire. So I know eventually he gonna meet his stomach. His wife's not gonna meet his stomach, you know? So <laughs> that's, <laughs> you know that. <laughs> yeah, that's but, you know, up. it's, you know, I, I commend you, man. You know, with me in Georgia with the real estate um and yeah. consulting company going on and me trading and just different things, man. I I honestly know how it is. Yeah. Um being hard and having a hard time trying to be able to tell your story. And with you and me remembering that we grew up as kids introverted and we didn't share, you know, what we were going through, that because that wasn't in. That wasn't the in crowd to yeah. you being a successful young man like you are, man. I am very proud of you, man. Real proud of you. And um, anything else you want anybody to know? You got any projects coming up that you want um, everybody to look out for? Um, you know, just uh, uh, stay tuned, man. Follow me on Facebook and on Instagram at morewarenessteas.com. Definitely stay linked in with you if they want any kind of tips in business. You know, I know I, I stay linked in there, man. I'm subscribed and I'm watching T, uh, 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 T Mr. Legacy Builder, uh, religiously, man, for any kind of tips that help me build my brand and help me build my business. Um, so for anybody that's looking to come up to it, man, seriously, keep your eyes and ears open, pay attention and take these gems when you can get them. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. They're here. We got them. And I think uh, what me and you both uh, talked about before was breaking cycles. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, yes. Changing up the culture a little bit. The more we know, the, the better we do. That's correct, man. Well, I, I like to end, um, since this is one of many, I'm going to definitely have you back, you know. So we, um, just let me know in the near future when we can link back up so I can bring you back on the channel so we can talk about any new products that you got going on. For and sure, Hey, you know, uh, this shirt isn't on my site yet, but if people do like the Sober Drip, that's what the, the, the it is, it's the Sober Drip right here. Uh Stay tuned. Check out morewarenessteas.com and I'll uh, throw it up there. Let me know what you guys think. So y'all hear that? If you like that shirt, follow him. Make sure you follow him anyway. He got a lot of gems. And this is a young man. I personally know him. We five years apart. I was trying to figure out, you know, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, old as Sam, but I, I, I think we like seven years apart or so like that. But I've been knowing him all my life and all his life, and he's always been a value adder. And I've, when he told me his message about his story and all the things he's overcame and the movement he got going on where the company doesn't just take your money, but your proceeds to his business um, allows him to support other organizations out there, Alcohol Anonymous, which is AAA, um, you know, different football groups because it's not so much about depression it's more about being aware of what's going on in the world and his movement just it personally hit home when he told me of uh, you know he was going through inner demons and by connecting to a way to help others he was able to overcome his inner demons so everybody this is the infamous Stephen Moore Make sure you guys check him out over there at morewitnesstees.com and make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video with anybody that want to know how they can overcome for motivation or anybody that want to know more about this young man, check him out. Um, this is T. Mr. Legacy Builder. You guys be blessed. Hi, right, Steven. I'll hit you later, man. All right, man. Thank you again for ha having me, man. We'll definitely do this again. No problem, man. Love, man. Peace. All right, peace.